and uh, what areas where do we use botox in facial aesthetics as well as uh, uh, other than facial aesthetics where can you use botox okay so we'll start now hello everyone i am dr pranshu mehta and welcome back to the ent surgeon presents aesthetic medicine and injectables okay so today's class is our third lecture uh, we have already done the, the first and the second one the ones who have not seen the first and second lecture kindly go through the lecture 1 and 2 before coming to this so that you can understand this lecture they are available on uh, youtube the ent surgeon's channel okay so this is lecture 3 facial aesthetics now this topic as you all know like this lecture is about botox or the botulinum toxin now sounds interesting isn't it uh, the botox we have heard it uh, since we were kids that the actor actresses uh, they go for botox injections and they become pretty and they don't age and all but how and what does botox do so first of all uh, botox is nothing but botulinum toxin also called bont b o n t as in short form it is a neurotoxin that's why we have written it as bont botulinum bo and then neurotoxin nt okay so uh, botulinum toxin is actually very potent and is considered to be poisonous as well so it's a kind of poison as well there are many antigenic types like antigenically different toxins so there are if i elaborate there are eight types starting from type a a uh, type a is the most common one and the one which will be using and studying about in facial aesthetics however there are a b then c1 c2 d e f and g so there are total eight types of botox uh, the ones which are commercially used mostly are a then very rarely b but not the other ones so a is the one which we use even in facial aesthetics and is the one which we'll be talking about today okay so so uh, this bond was actually discovered two centuries back so it's not new it's not something that has come up in the previous years uh, but how it was discovered how it was named okay today we will not go into too much detail about the history but still there was a person who was eating sausages and he experienced the effects of botulinum toxin so sausage in latin is called botul b o t u l hence he called this as botulinum because he ate it from a sausage and he experienced these uh, uh, you can say the symptoms like uh, the effects of botox hence it was named botulinum toxin but till then it was not known what it is we found out more about the toxin in 19th century than in the 20th century but it was 1996 when it was actually described for being used in aesthetic medicine so we are going to read about this it was described like how you can use this in aesthetic medicine but until 2002 it was not used it was only described that you can use it for anti wrinkles or for removing the wrinkles so first use was done in 2002 and that too for uh, the uh, you can say the wrinkles of forehead as well as glabella Uh, so when you actually try to uh, show angry face you see the lines over the glabella they are called the glabular wrinkles so it was used for correcting the glabular wrinkles and that was the first documented use of uh, botox in aesthetic medicine in 2002 okay so i think that's sufficient about the uh, history of botulinum toxin i'll not go into details as i've already told you now we'll read very few basics about botox uh, today see we are going to uh, discuss how to use botox and we'll even see a case a real case and we'll try to do a, a case so that you can understand how i take up a patient and then how i plan a patient then how i prepare a patient and what do i do in a patient and what are pre and post results of a botox patient okay so let's consider a patient to be patient x so suppose this patient x comes to me and the patient has come to me for something which till now i don't know like patient has walked in into my clinic 
Now, how do I know whether he or she needs Botox? Like, how to identify a patient which will require Botox and not fillers or threads or anything else? Okay, so for that, we should know okay, what all effect Botox has and what all we can do or we can treat with the help of this Botox of botulinum toxin. Okay, uh, for the rest of the lecture, I'll be calling it Botox in instead of botulinum toxin. Uh, I find it easy to say so, that's why. So, first of all, I'll tell you what all parts or what all things you can correct with the help of Botox. It is very important. If you know what all we can treat with Botox, then you will be able to identify patients and select patients which may require Botox. So, starting with forehead, forehead wrinkles. So, people who have forehead wrinkles or the frowning lines, which we say, then the glabular wrinkles. Glabular wrinkles are the ones near the glabella when you try to show angry face. Then the broad drooping. Uh, some people may have a uh, very highly placed uh, bro or some people may have uh, drooping arches. You can even correct that. Okay, then there's crow's feet. Crow's feet is the... Um, now, some people might be knowing what is crow's feet. We have actually discussed in discussed it in the merge scale. So, if you have not seen the second video, kindly go through the second and the first video. Then we have nasal wrinkles. Nasal wrinkles can be treated with Botox. Then we have the under eye wrinkle. Uh, do not confuse the under eye wrinkle with uh, the infra uh, orbital hollow. Infra orbital hollow is different and under eye wrinkle is different. Okay. So this I write it as the upper face. This is what we can do in the upper face for the wrinkles. But other than wrinkles, there is one more thing that can be corrected in the upper face. Uh, see, Botox, okay, we'll discuss what it'll do and how it'll do. Basically, it's relaxing the muscle. So, wrinkles are going. Now, another thing which we can do is, uh, some people you must have seen have uh, hyperactive temporal muscle, or temporalis muscle. What happens is, whenever they chew, you can see both the sides, temporalis muscle, hyperactivity. Even if they uh, try to clinch their teeth, you will see the hyperactivity. So, even that... Uh, visible effect that you can treat. The hyperactive temporalis muscle can be treated in the upper face with the help of Botox. Okay, now moving to the mid and the lower face. You will be surprised to know very effective treatment of gummy smile is Botox. You can correct gummy smile with the help of Botox. Obviously, uh, if it is very severe, we can't without the help of surgery, but uh, mild in moderate cases can be corrected with the gummy smile. Then drooping of the nasal tip. You must have seen some people nasal tip droops when they smile or they speak. Otherwise, it's normal. That's because of hyperactivity of which muscle? Okay, I'll leave it for you guys to comment uh, below this video on the YouTube or over here that which muscle is responsible for drooping of the nasal tip. Then we have neck wrinkles and uh, on the cheek, the pits, ac uh, acne pits or the scar marks and the pits. Uh, that might be any degree. We can correct that with the help of Botox. Some people, uh, you must have seen specifically in the uh, adolescent age, as well as the adult having pits, and they want to get rid of those pits. That can be treated with the help of Botox. Then we have hyperactive masseter. Some people who have hyperactive masseter or hyperactive mentalis muscle, uh, that can also be treated with the help of Botox injection. Uh, other than this, some people see... I have specifically given a pause at the 14th one. Till now, what we have done is all related to cosmesis, right? But there are something, uh, there's something that can be treated with the help of Botox, which is very surprising uh, for a few people because they must have not read about that. Cervical pain, neck pain, headaches, because of hyperactivities of muscles can be treated with the help of Botox. Like... Botox in the trapezius can help in relieving a patient from chronic cervical pain uh, or an injection in the occipitalis. So these are the uses other than aesthetics. Okay. So this is for lower face and the middle face. Now we know that what all can be treated with the help of Botox. So whenever you have a patient and you see a patient and you feel, okay, whether to use Botox over here or not, now you know where to use Botox and what for to use Botox. Now, moving on. So, consider that the patient has come to us now. Now, the patient is in the clinic. So, now I know what all things can be treated with the help of Botox. 
So I'm prepared. If the patient has come to me, I'll examine the patient. Now there are two things, two ways. First one, see whenever a patient has come to you for cosmetic issue, the patient himself will give you a complaint. So patient might directly come to you and tell you that I have this problem and I want this problem to be corrected. For example, a patient may come to me for forehead wrinkles, frowning lines which have become permanent and are aggressive when he looks up. Or the other way around, patient may come to me for cosmetic issue only, but I will observe and tell him that his age, for example, if the patient has come to me uh, for a uh, younger looking skin, I can observe and tell him that your dynamic wrinkles are way too much and very severe. And if we treat them, then uh, the overall appearance, youthful appearance may have a better outcome. So see, there are two things. Patient will come with their complaint or I will observe and advise them. Now, whatever I'll see is wrinkles. Now, wrinkles are of two types, either static or dynamic. Now, this is a very important concept and you need to understand this, that uh, static wrinkles, wrinkles which have become static, we will treat them with the help of fillers. Static wrinkles means like the uh, uh, forehead lines which have become permanent, very deep, or the uh, infraorbital hollow, or the nasolabial fold that has become very prominent, or the uh, marinate lines, and we will always leave them undercorrected. We will not overdo them so that the person looks artificial. We want the person person to look natural. Then there are dynamic wrinkles. Wrinkles which appear on doing some expression. They will be treated with the help of Botox. And this is very, very, very important. Your main aim should be to treat the dynamic wrinkles with the help of Botox. Automatically, your uh, static wrinkles will also improve. That uh, you, uh, you'll understand once we start doing a patient. Okay, so we will not use Botox for only static wrinkles. We will not do that. So anywhere we will not use Botox where we do not know. Like for example, we will not leave a patient expressionless. I don't want a face where there are no expressions. Or we will not leave the patient with asymmetry or drooping of brow. We will not do anything wrong. Until unless we know how to inject Botox, we will not inject Botox. If we know how to do it correctly, then only touch it. Otherwise, do not touch it until unless you have done it under the supervision of someone with proper hands-on training. Otherwise, don't because this uh, Botox is very potent. Like it has amazing uh, power and it can correct the face very, very easily. But also, you can make the person look bad if you do not know how to do it. So, uh, we learn it and... Uh, if you get a chance ever to learn it hands-on, then we'll try to do it. And then you can do it on patients. Okay. So, till now what we've done, patient will come. I should know what all I can treat with the help of Botox. So, now you know what all you can treat with the help of Botox. Now, patient has come to the clinic. He has told me his complaints. I also observed the patient and I have told him, okay, this needs to be corrected. Now, patient has agreed. Now, I will give him a treatment plan. Suppose we are taking case where we are treating only two things. Forehead, wrinkles, dynamic, as well as crow's feet. Only these two. So I'll now what I'll do, I've told my plan to the patient. This is what I'm correcting. Now I will take the history of the patient. Now you will be surprised. Why are we taking the history? Why is the history important in Botox when we have already decided what we are going to do? Now this history is very important because there are some contraindications for Botox injections. Person, any person, having neuromuscular junction disease or anomalies or anything, anything related to that, any syndrome, for example, myasthenia gravis, uh, then see anything, lambert Eaton syndrome or myasthenia gravis, we will not touch the patient with the help of Botox because Botox is going to act at the same junction and already the people, they have muscle weakness, we cannot uh, increase the muscle weakness, we will not enhance it, so we will leave the patient, we will not touch the patient with the Botox. Now, any injection has its uh, composition. Like for making an injection, Botox is there, but there are some added uh, com constituents that help in making that mixture, like NACL, albumin. So we have to check the components. Whichever brand of Botox you might get, check for the components and then ask the patient and take the history for 
allergy of each and every component that has to be documented properly we cannot uh, go ahead with the pa a patient without documenting allergy history of each component okay then if everything is okay we'll take the consent of the patient we'll explain the patient about the outcomes now the outcomes obviously first of all we have the favorable outcome which we want to happen so we'll tell the patient that these wrinkles will go and we will tell him that static wrinkles will not go the dynamic ones will go then we'll explain him the side effects see every drug can have a side effect there are some effects which are immediate and are expected and are very very common means they will occur in almost 8 out of 10 people which you have done so you have you have to tell them that once i do the procedure for one or two days you will feel this you will feel that so there are some very common ones then there are some common ones then there are the rare ones which are just like the warning signs which we'll discuss later that if they occur you have to approach me okay uh, it does not usually happen but still you have to tell each and every detail about it to the patient now our patient has understood the pros and cons has uh, like signed the consent so he came to us we examined him we planned something that this is what we're gonna do then we took the history to rule out everything we explained him everything we took his consent now when we have taken his consent and explained him the details now the thing comes now is the treatment issue how to treat the patient now before treating the patient post procedure things also i'll explain him before now post procedure effects also i've explained him now i feel my patient is ready for going for undergoing the treatment now i'll start with the treatment part so uh, for the treatment part what i'll do is i'll share with you uh, an actual patient an actual patient which I had done once for Botox only for upper facial Botox. I had done the complete upper facial Botox, but I'll only discuss about two things today. That is uh, forehead wrinkles as well as the crow's feet. So this is the patient. I have already taken the consent from the patient. So no issues with the uh, pictures and all. Okay. So first let's revise everything. What we had done in previous classes. Also, I'm marking the points uh, tracheon glabella then i'll mark the base of the nose then i'll mark the chin or the uh, now let's draw lines we are just trying to see whether this matches what we had read uh, last time about the golden ratio is this face also in that ratio zone or not okay so i've marked the lines now see i can see from here only that these are not equal should have been equal so i'm marking that suppose that is a this is b and this is c what I feel from my perspective over here is that out of these three, B is the biggest, followed by C, followed by A. So this person is not at all in the golden ratio. Golden ratio should have been 1, 1, 1. Uh, if you're considering it, uh, see, length to width, I'm not uh, considering it. I'm just taking the uh, division. These three parts should have been almost equal, but they're not equal in this case okay so moving on let's draw other lines also you remember we had discussed a line vertical line passing from the medial canthus to the outer edge of the ala so outer edge of the ala is here medial canthus you can see is inside so this line is little bit shifted so it's not where it should have been like vertically in the same plane they should have been the uh, medial canthus and the ala so you can say the nose is broad here it should have been technically so it's broad and now the other line from the margin medial margin of the cornea to the uh, oral cavity corners both side now you can see their ratio also will not come proper because you can see already over here the inner part should have been here had it been here the ella this face the nose at least would have been in a perfect ratio with the lips but right now it's not Okay, the other two from the lateral canthus, uh, they are equal. The lateral canthus, the distance from the lateral canthus to the medial canthus and the intercanthal distance, they appear to be equal. So, okay, uh, let's not deviate from what we were discussing and go back to Botox. I thought it will be good if we revise it for once at least. Now, coming to Botox and the MERS scale. We had discussed the MERS scale. Now, this is the MERS scale for forehead lines at rest. Now, look carefully at rest 
from here i don't know how good is the quality of the video to you actually there are very mild lines but there are you might not be able to appreciate the lines and you might feel that this is grade zero but i am writing it as grade one static they are static lines lines at rest they are not at the uh, expression they are not talking about the dynamic lines now see when i asked him to look up now you can see there appears some lines on his forehead now these are dynamic lines when you ask the patient to see up look up move his brows up now these lines you can uh, link to either grade 3 or 4 based on your perception different people choose different perceptions and different grades i'll take it as mers 3 so i'm taking it as the mers 3 in dynamic phase so dynamic lines of his forehead are mers scale 3 as per me now coming to the crow's feet crow's feet again at rest first i'm first talking about the crow's feet at rest now if you see on left and right side both sides the almost nil but i'll call it as uh, on the right i'll give it zero on the left i'll give it one the very fine lines but there are so grade zero and one for the merge scale of crow's feet so this side is zero this side is still one uh, but not less than one in static now you see the dynamic lines here you see if you see his nasal level fold you'll see he's smiling in this and now you see these lines over here these lines show that there is severe like grade three you can even call it grade four but at least grade three there is grade three wrinkles on his crow's feet while smiling so dynamic lines again on the forehead also grade three or grade three four whatever you want to choose here also grade three grade three lines are there and you can see it so actually i think you will be able to appreciate uh, the difference between static and dynamic more once i show you the video so even for the uh, forehead frowning as well as the crow seat what i'll do is i'll show you a video so whenever a patient comes we take pictures then we take a video and we take video and pictures from both the sides front and is it visible now Hello, is it visible now? Uh, hello. Is it visible now? Okay, okay, I'll, I'll play it from here again. If we revise it for once at least, now coming to Botox and the MERS scale. We had discussed the MERS scale. Now this is the MERS scale for forehead lines at rest. Now look carefully at rest from here. I don't know how good is the quality of the video to you. Actually, there are very mild lines, but there are. You might not be able to appreciate the lines and you might feel that this is grade zero, but I'm writing it as grade one. Static. They are static lines. Lines at rest. They are not at the uh, expression. They are not talking about the dynamic lines. Now, see, when I asked him to look up, now you can see there appears some lines on his forehead. Now, these are dynamic lines. When you ask the patient to see up, look up, move his brows up. Now, these lines you can uh, link to either grade 3 or 4 based on your perception. Different people choose different perceptions and different grades. I'll take it as MERS 3. So, I'm taking it as the MERS 3 in dynamic phase. So, dynamic lines of his forehead are MERS scale 3 as per me. Now, coming to the crow's feet. Crow's feet again at rest. First, I'm talking about the crow's feet at rest. Now, if you see on left and right side, both sides, they're almost nil. But I'll call it as uh, on the right, I'll give it zero. On the left, I'll give it one. The very fine lines, but there are. So, grade zero and one for the MERS scale of crow's feet. So, this side is zero. This side is still one. Uh, but not less than one in static now you see the dynamic lines here you see if you see his nasal level fold you'll see he's smiling in this and now you see these lines over here these lines show that there is severe like grade three you can even call it grade four but at least grade three there is grade three wrinkles on his crow's feet while smiling so dynamic lines again on the forehead also grade three or grade three four whatever you want to choose here also grade 3. Grade 3 lines are there and you can see it. So, actually I think you will be able to appreciate uh, the difference between static and dynamic more once I show you the video.
so even for the uh, forehead frowning as well as the crow seat what i'll do is i'll show you a video so whenever a patient comes we take pictures then we take a video and we take video and pictures from both the sides front and side front for the forehead side for crow's feet why we take a video so that we can show that we are asking the patient to actually do uh, an expression uh, so that muscles come into action now you see here i am asking him to look up when he is looking up see when he is not looking up there are no lines when he is looking up there are severe lines grade 3 now here also you see the crow's feet previously in the static area there were no crow's feet but when he is smiling there are grade 3 wrinkles in the crow's feet area so now i'll show the picture and we'll compare it to the actual mer scale exact that picture okay so before doing that i'll tell you again what we did was the patient came to us we examined the patient so the patient had come to me i had examined my patient then i had explained him everything and compared mer scale like where he was matching then i took a picture of dynamic as well as static and compared it again then i recorded a video which i showed you right now now i have documented all this now i'll document individual picture with individual picture from the mer scale here his picture dynamically is matching this picture from severe lines from the dynamic mer scale or the or the uh, expression face of the uh, forehead okay now see i'll document this i'll document mer scale for dynamic forehead lines to be grade 3 now i've documented it with one picture and i've written pre so these are the pre pictures from the treatment so treatment has not started yet these are pre pictures or pre procedure pictures now i'll document similarly the crow's feet area now in this you can see on the left crow's feet of this person while smiling that is dynamic crow's feet now to confirm whether the person is smiling see the nasal labial fold on the both sides and you'll understand the person is smiling even on the picture in the uh, comparative picture which we have taken from mer scale even in the patient's picture the smiling lines are present so we know that this is a dynamic picture here you can see the crow's feet area uh, they are of grade 3 severe wrinkles some people might find it equivalent to very severe or grade 4 but i have like i feel the grade 3 so i am marking it as dynamic lines in the uh, crow's feet area from mer scale as grade 3 again so see i have marked it grade 3 in both dynamic lines on the forehead as well as dynamic lines on the uh, crow's feet area and both are pre procedure pictures till now we have only seen pre procedure pictures now what what we have done or what we have marked till now see how to mark also you'll understand when you make a file of the patient mer scale you'll write forehead you'll write static and dynamic then again what i'll do i'll write crow's feet again what i'll do i'll write crow's feet static and dynamic now one very important thing see for crow's feet there are two sides right and left what you can do is you can mark individually you can either do this like you can write bilateral crow's feet or you can write right and left so what i prefer doing is i uh, write left and right over here only like right and left so that uh, it's easy to understand instead of writing bilateral so forehead static for this patient was 1 forehead dynamic for this patient was 3 crow's feet static was 0 on one side and 1 on the other side then crow's feet dynamic on both sides is 3 so mer scale have already documented now what i'll do is i'll proceed with the treatment so for proceeding with the treatment uh first we should know all about botox which we are already knowing by now so for treatment we should know how to inject where to inject what to inject so right now i'll tell you the injection points where all we inject botox where do we inject botox on the face but the dosage the units everything i'll not discuss right now that will discuss later because that is of not uh, that is not of much use for you right now for you the most important thing for now will be uh, where to inject and how to inject dosage and units and how to calculate and how to mix the botox how it comes what's the preparation that can be discussed later so to start with uh the injection points for the forehead we are doing the injection points for the forehead first first i'll tell you about the forehead then we'll move on to the crow's feet area so for the forehead uh, i'll draw 
these are the eyebrows i'm drawing so the brows then i'll draw the eyes yeah so these are the eyes now what we'll do is okay let me make the nose so that you have an idea now what i'll do is uh this is the face overall face of a person that is the hairline this is the side contour so this is suppose a female comes to us for forehead uh forehead uh, wrinkles what i've done is i have imagine i have taken a pen yellow pen and i'm marking the shape of the bro so i've marked the shapes of the bro you can see that now from the highest point of the bro on both the sides i'll mark a perpendicular line a straight line vertical line till the hair margin now this line usually passes through the mid pupillary line but uh, can be otherwise as well so i prefer taking the line which goes from the topmost point of the bro now on this line i will leave 2 cm area i'll measure 2 cm area and i'll leave it now i'll make a line a horizontal plane line at this point connecting these two points now anything below this line i will not touch for the forehead wrinkles i can touch it for the glabella and other things but not for the forehead for forehead wrinkles any injection i'll give above this side so now what i've done is i've divided it into four first and then into eight equal parts the upper area now this upper area i've divided into eight equal parts i'll use the i'll use the midline to extend on both the sides for 1 cm along with the face contour and mark another two points now this is what you have to draw now i'll mark the points on this this is the drawing now i'll tell you where are the injection points just see and learn why are they here that will not discuss abhi okay so let's start uh, i'll mark the points exactly where we have to inject where we are injecting the botox in the center of the uh, squares in the center in the center four squares the points are in the center on the lateral squares the points are on the boundary and then these two points which we had marked these red marked points are the points of the injection where we'll give the injections everywhere we'll give two units of botox so now what units how to calculate that that i'll tell you later but this point this point this point so how many 2 2 2 6 then 2 8 then 2 10 then again 2 2 2 2 2 then total 20 so 20 units you can actually put here understood and now see very important thing i'll tell you what happens is imagine uh in this face on one side right side that is imagine that i give two units each on the right side okay to relax the muscle so what botox is doing actually it is relaxing the muscle so the wrinkles are not there the muscles will not contract as much as they used to now imagine on right side i have done two units on all points but on left side what i do is i give one one unit now this creates imbalance the muscles on the right side are relaxed more but the pull on the left side muscles is more because they are not relaxed right side they are relaxed left side they are not relaxed this bro goes a bit up as compared to the other one so that is uh, where this thing comes into play now similarly this asymmetry we can use even for beautification now imagine these two lateral points i give only one unit or even zero unit and in the center everywhere i have given two units what happens is the central part of the bros stay down because the muscles the frontalis is relaxed completely but the pull on the sides is increased so if previously this was the shape of the bro suppose now the pull on the lateral side is increased equally on both sides you can give arch to the bro an artificial arch like it will look 100% natural you will not even come to know but eyebrows will be naturally arched and this is what we call as the foxy eyes you can create foxy eyes with the help of botox and that's just like once you learn what we are doing and once you master this thing you will understand where if you reduce 1% or one unit how this change will occur and how the patient will look okay so i'll simplify it again i'll draw it again these are the brows on the topmost point in the hair margin we draw two lines we leave 2 cm we create another line put a line in the center again divide into four then put a line again over here and now 
uh, what I have done is extend the middle line one one centimeter and then mark the points. So the eight points where uh, where we are giving the botox in the center are these one two three four five six seven and eight and the two on the sides. Okay, two units each. This is botox of the forehead. So this is for the botox of the forehead. Now uh, you've seen it in the drawings. Let's see it on a real patient. How to draw it? Where to be uh, present if the patient is lying down? You have to be present behind the head. Patient has to lie down in front of you. So I'm marking the bro. Now the highest point from both the highest points, I'll mark a vertical line towards the hair margin. I'll leave two centimeter space, mark another line. Then I'll divide that into two. Again, center line, divide into eight equal boxes. Now I'll mark the points in the center of the last line, then in the center of the boxes, then again on the line. Now I'll extend this middle line by one centimeter following the contour of the face on both the sides. Okay, this side and this side, both sides and mark another point. So these are the uh, 12 points, oh, sorry, eight, 10 points, eight in the center and two on both sides, uh, including both sides. So this is Botox for forehead. Now let's see the marking for the crow's feet. So first of all, you should know that uh, for crow's feet, I'm taking the side view. That is the bro. This is the eye. I've made the eye. Now, this is approximately where the crow's feet is actually present. So what I'll do is first palpate the outer orbital rim with your tip of the finger. Now palpate the outer orbital rim. Suppose the outer orbital rim comes somewhere here. I'll draw it. Suppose somewhere here when you're feeling it. Exactly one centimeter you leave, one centimeter distance. From one centimeter distance, you mark a point horizontally parallel to that. You mark another point above and below, forming an arc, which is approximately one centimeter away from that center point, forming a sort of radius. Now, this should be the direction of injection, and these three should be the points. Now, I'll show you in a simplified, magnified way. So, here, if this is the outer orbital rim, one centimeter away is the first point where I've marked. Now, make an arc of one centimeter, one point above, one point below. This is how the first injection will go. This is how the second injection will go. This is how the third injection will go, forming an arrowhead. You can see an arrowhead going away from the eye, if that is the outer orbital rim. Now see, these injections have to be superficial. We cannot go deep here. They are superficial injections. Here we give three units at all three points. Whereas where what we read before the forehead, the injections are always given in the muscle. We try to go in the muscle. Here we try to stay as superficial as possible. Okay, so these are the real markings you can see. Markings on the forehead as well as the marking on the for the crow's feet. You can see this and the direction of the injection also I've made. Okay, moving forward. Now I have given the injection. So post-treatment, post-procedure, see, just see the crow's feet area, pre and post. This is on day two. Now let me tell you, the actual result of Botox comes after 7 to 14 days. Best result comes. See in both the cases, patient is smiling. And just look at the dynamic lines of the crow's feet. From 3, they have gone to 1 or you can say even 0. So the crow's feet area, which was Merck scale 3, just look at the wrinkles over there the dynamic wrinkles. Here he is only smiling, but on the post phase, I've asked him to laugh with the face open. Still, there are no lines. And this was day two. Now, this is the picture of day seven, post treatment day seven. The patient came up for follow up again for day seven. So you have to call the patient on day two, day seven and day 14. Now, just have a look at this area. There are literally no lines. This place has become blank. When he's smiling, he's still smiling. You cannot make it out maybe because of the mustache. It's not there. Uh, I'll show you a video and you'll be able to appreciate it better over there. So first forehead. This was the pre video. We had already seen it. You can see approximately silver lines were coming here. You can see now post. Only one or two lines are remaining that two over the left eye that that's also because this is day two or day seven and complete effect has not come. Now you see the crow's feet area. This is the dynamic wrinkles in the crow's feet, which were coming pre-treatment and post-treatment. You see when he's smiling, there is literally no wrinkle. Merce scale zero from Merce scale three. Now you see from Merce scale three 
it has come to merge scale zero. So that is the power of Botox. Botox is very powerful. Now we'll compare it with the pictures. Best thing how to tell how to show the patient that your treatments work. Take a picture of pre and post treatment. Make a collage and keep it with the merge scale pictures, the respective pictures of the respective scales. So severe wrinkles in the dynamic phase pre treatment. However, this was this can even be considered four in the picture. It's three, but if you try to see, it's even more than the picture of the merge scale. Then post treatment, if you try to see, it is zero. Literally, there are no wrinkles. So it's like merge scale three or four to merge scale zero. We have brought the patient to zero. And if you want to consider it even one, then also see from three to one and from three to two, then two to one, one to zero. Patient has come to zero in seven days with the help of Botox injection. And this is why now he is looking youthful. Previously, the patient's age was not much. Patient is unmarried. His age is less. But because of these wrinkles, the skin looks a bit elder, like aged. But the patient is not. So to bring back the youthful skin, we can do this. Now this effect will last at least for six months, and can even last till eighteen months, depending on how your body will metabolize the Botox. So that is dependent. That varies from uh, person to person, like how your body takes on the Botox. So today we have done till now what we have read is about the Botox, uh, like its history, its uh, like how it was discovered, where it was used first, then how to see and know where to use Botox, what are the uses, so which all patients we can treat. So we know all the uses of Botox. Today we have seen a patient where we have discussed the forehead and crow's feet area of the patient. Where we have, what are the points where we have given the injections? So that I am again showing. This is what we have done till now. Now we have also seen how to prepare the patient, how to examine, uh, how to take consent, then how to take proper history for this and to note down the allergies as well. Then uh, we have also know, seen where to mark for the injection. Now remember this marking is very important before proceeding with the procedure mark the patient even if like i have done more than i'll say uh 40 45 patients for this but even today i mark all my cases you have to mark the cases until unless you'll mark see there's no point of making a mistake if i can mark and it hardly takes five minutes so do not forget to draw the markings okay for the next class what i'll do is we'll do markings for few more things of Botox. We'll complete the Botox. Today we did only two things. That is forehead and the close feet. We'll do markings of the other uses of the Botox there to do. Then some of the side effects also we'll discuss. Then I'll try to start with the fillers next class so that we are on the track and uh, we can finish off this uh, series early. We'll try to do fillers. We'll start with the fillers and we'll do the treatment of the fillers. We'll start individual part wise, the filler part. And for all the people, uh, I'll say if there are PGs who are interested in doing the MCQs, uh, there are more than 900 MCQs and illustrations on the ENT surgeons on Instagram. If you want to follow, you can find the ENT surgeons or you can just Google ENT by Dr. Pranch Mehta and you'll find uh, a few articles, some videos, and some uh, questions that might be useful for you. So well, that's all for today. I'm Dr. Pranchu Mehta, and this is Aesthetic Medicine and Injectables Lecture 3. Hope to see you soon next week for the Lecture 4. Till then, keep reading, keep learning. Hello. This is our, a wonderful presentation as usual. Uh, we'll take open up the question and answer session for the audience. Yeah, Anybody mm -hmm. who wishes to uh, have any doubts, you can unmute uh, and uh, take questions from the speaker. And thank you, Torin, uh, Jasila, Satyanarayana, and KV for uh, your appreciation comments. Any question? Anything regarding this? If there is any question, you can just uh, contact me here or even at other places. Yeah, most of the uh, lecture was actually very uh, crisp and clear. Yeah, we have one question. Uh, what For are the complications? complications? Okay. Yeah. Like
actually i'm thinking uh, there's not one there are many so that is a part of the next lecture uh, we'll finish off with the lower face botox injecting points also because today we only did upper facial botox only till the crow's feet forehead and crow's feet next time we'll see for the gummy smile uh, for the hyperactive masseter hyperactive mentalis and along with that even uh, the drooping tip of the nose i had asked you in the video that i would like you people to come up with the name of the muscle that is responsible for drooping of the tip only the tip of the nose then along with this i'll be taking up the complications complications will divide into most common like which will occur only like it's as if that it will occur in every case then just common then rare and then very rare we'll divide it like that and we'll we'll talk about that in the next next class okay techniques of injecting and how to palpate the bulk of the muscle everything okay everything we'll talk about this in the next class however uh, techniques of injecting uh, for today's class i'll tell in uh, for forehead it is at 60 degree you have to go facing towards the scalp at 60 degree angle and uh, it has to go deep within the muscle whereas for the crow's feet uh, you have to go exactly 180 degree it means parallel to the skin as if you are going superficial as if you are doing a subcutaneous injection just like that you don't have to go deep we don't want to reach the uh, deeper muscle for uh, this thing for uh, crow's feet then the take home message according to me would be botox is one of the most potent most powerful things in aesthetic medicine since it has been discovered and it will always stay no matter what filler we'll get in the future like initially we had uh, only space occupying fillers then we had uh, rejuvenating fillers which could uh, absorb fluid and then recently we are focusing on regenerative fillers which provide a scaffolding where even natural um, collagen can be formed but they will keep coming and adding on like previous filler you'll forget a new one will come but nothing will replace botox so botox is a must if you want to uh, come into this field of facial aesthetics you'll have to become the master of botox it is something which is very potent and if used uh, judiciously can prove as a magic tool for you guys yeah you can start with a smaller dose to get hang of it that will be good so i think we're done with the questions yes sir uh, yeah so we'll be meeting again on uh, next wednesday for the fourth uh, class and uh, as uh, dr pranshumatha sir has said uh, it will be of uh, lower face thank you all uh, for attending uh, this session and uh, we'll see you again on next wednesday at 7:30 pm indian time thank you all okay